Hi, I'm Brian London. I'm here at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver. And joining me is Brandon McDonald, the CEO of Fireweed Zinc. Brandon, I, one of the things I'm talking to people about here are obviously opportunities in the junior mining sector. And the way to really make money in the sector is mm -hmm. to buy undervalued, unloved assets at the bottom. You're involved in uh, this conference. It's mostly about gold and yeah. you have a zinc play. Uh, it's at the bottom. I'm telling people this is a great time to buy a zinc play. But in particular, fireweed is one of the most extraordinary zinc plays I've, I've seen uh, really in my career. You've, you've developed, you found, you're drilling off an, uh, an outstanding resource, but yet you're you know, to pardon the pun, scratching the surface, you have other targets, new discoveries, and beyond these new discoveries, kind of a developing trend. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, the when we originally acquired the property, we only had about 50 square kilometers, and we grew it to 540. Right. Um, and we keep finding these new zones, some of them previously established, some of them kind of new discoveries along mm -hmm. the way. And, and mining exploration is a game of surprises. Mm -hmm. um, you want the good surprises. Yeah, well, yeah. that's that's the thing. We've we've been lucky with consistently yeah. good surprises. The the recent drilling in the boundary zone in the mm -hmm. west of the property. This is a, a zone that Cominco now Tech had drilled in the '80s and very early '90s. And our first two holes were better than anything they had drilled. And long intersections. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible intersections. You know, the better one of the two, 230 meters true width of 4.1% wow. zinc from surface, and the first 100 meters true width of that from surface was just about 8% zinc. Mm -hmm. So double the average head grade of a zinc mine globally yeah. in, in a big fat from surface intersection. So um, that, you know, reflects a, a bit of thinking that, you know, and, and a concept that we had that, that you know, Kaminko had and now tech had not adequately considered, mm -hmm. but it was also a, a little dose of luck, right? So um, you take that and, and you, you take what you've learned and we're building on that. And we think we have something really special out West. And you, and it's a different kind of mineralization mm. that you had encountered, and and you were trying to understand that and coming up with analogs and searched, I guess, high and low, but did did find an analog to to what you're the, the style of mineralization you're uncovering right now. Did yeah, so so the style of mineralization and boundary is is vein vein breccias, mm -hmm. uh, um, disseminated matrix fill and class replacement, which is nothing like what you see at, at the eastern part of the property at the Tom and Jason deposits. Right. So the closest analog we found was what's called the vein horizon at, at some of the deposits at Red Dog. Mm -hmm. uh, very similar texturally, these same veins, multi-phase sphalerite mineralization. Um, so this. You know, when you find that genetic geological analog, this helps guide your exploration as you look to expand it because you see what that does there. And mm -hmm. you think if that was happening here, uh, how do I find it? So we're now looking for barite horizons this may be plumbed into. Okay, that, that was what I was about to get to. You're, you're even extending beyond the discoveries, the new discoveries you just mm -hmm. made. And, and what are those signs that you're seeing? You're looking for barite now. Um, are you seeing that? Yeah, we do see barite horizons there stratigraphically mm -hmm. above these vein horizons. So the question is where we see them outcrop, they're barren, but uh, most of it is not going to be outcropping. So, so is, is, are these two systems plumbed into each other? Uh, barite uh, will act as a physical and chemical trap for the zinc-rich fluids, mm -hmm. which produce these massive, uh, massive sulfide horizons where there's this intersection. So that, we think, could be a major prize in the western part of the property. And starting at surface, I, I, it, you know, we can't emphasize enough, I can't emphasize enough that you already have a resource yeah. that it ranks fairly well yeah. on a global scale. Uh, I think a developable resource. Mm -hmm. um, but these new discoveries are not included in that. Yeah. And so the upside is uh, being uh, coming into view more and more. It's not just the new discovery, but beyond that and beyond that. Uh, the end game for this is something that I think could rank uh, very well among the, the world's zinc deposits, both in terms of size, you know, tonnage, and grade. Because as you say, you're starting at the surface. Yeah, and I, I think you look at uh, the sale of Arizona mining to South 32 right. last year, $1.8 billion Canadian was the effective transaction price. Um, a resource significantly bigger than we have now, but is it significantly bigger as we drill off and integrate these new zones, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's TBD. Um, but that's that's the end game, you know, a, a, a whatever that is, 10 figure exit is possible. Yeah.
Well, uh, let's close out then and what the upcoming catalysts are. What's what's right ahead for investors to look for? Uh, so our spring, we'll be doing some engineering, some mm -hmm. some more detailed sorting work. Uh, we'll be doing releasing some uh, a more complete exploration thesis than I discussed about today in the western part of the property. Uh, and then there'll be the build up to summer. So it'll be a, a active summer for us. Wonderful. Uh, once again, fireweed zinc, it's it's a play that for smart investors, it is a smart investor play for speculators in the sector. Buy when, uh, when uh, the market's low, buy at low prices and buy a story that's growing in front of your eyes. And there's none better than fireweed zinc. Thank you. Thank you.